y'all it's hippie crafty hope welcome i am about to work on the four core challenge from ina salisbury this is a mixed media challenge from ina she has four core ingredients that's where the hashtag four core comes from this month for November, she has asked us to remake, redo, or reinvent something, whether it's 2D or 3D. Um, so there's different options for that. She, let's see, number two is to add something that flies or represents flight. Number three is to add triangles in some way. And number four is to include an, our email to her before and after photos. So. If you want to participate in this, do it before the end of November. I don't know when I'm getting this up, so you may not have much time. Like I said, it could be 2D as well, though. And I encourage you to go to Ina's video. I'll put a link to that below or even up here. I'll definitely below of what those four core ingredients are because she explains them a little more in depth. So on thinking of it and actually organizing and cleaning, I've added an additional office space in my house. So that's great. It gave me some more storage. And I've been sorting things and I found this in there. This I picked up at a garage sale a couple months ago, forgot about it because I bought it because I thought I could maybe get cogs or something out of it. Y'all, it's just a kitchen timer that works by turning it. So it's got like cogs and things in it. Well, I took it apart like so and the cogs and stuff that are in it or plastic and I don't really yeah have any concern for some of that I may continue to take it apart but for this challenge I thought I would use this plastic portion as my main base for it now we gotta decide what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is clean it up it is kind of kitchen dirty it's definitely got some like cooking grease and stuff like that on it that I need to clean up and I'm going to gather my other things. I know I have a stencil that has triangles on it, but I can make triangles out of anything else. So I'm going to get started on all of that. And um, the rest of this will probably be sped up and voiced over. Enjoy. The first thing I did was took some cardstock and measured the openings on both the back and the front and kind of traced them so that I was fairly sure I was going to make this two-sided. So I tried to use that as a template that stencil there I, I'm going to tell you that the the circle I end up making on here because I'm going to pull out a compass to do all of this it ends up not being the right thing I'll show you when we get to it how I ended up measuring <laughs> that opening but this isn't it but I did want to show you that I made templates because I was fairly sure I was going to insert something into each of those openings and I wanted to make sure they were right so once I got them all measured out I do cut them down um, later but first I wanted to go ahead and start altering the base itself and I'm using just black gesso I did clean that I took some kitchen soap you know, that has a degreaser and hot water and a little brush and scrubbed it down really well to get you know everything off of it to make sure that my gesso and everything does stick to it now this did get that okay there I was able to get the front of the timer off and that's what I used to trace to get the right shape and I did get so I was trying to show you that the back of it leans some and that's not what I want so I'm going to glue in those are just some like what do they call them tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree so they're game pieces basically the um, like Jenga playing pieces but the cheap ones from the Dollar Tree. And I'm using my black, whatchamacallit, E6000 because it's going to be hidden. Y'all, I don't tend to like the black E6000. It's super gooey, a little more so than the clear. But when it's going to be hidden, I don't mind using it. So, because I'd like to get it used up. <laughs> So I'm putting that, getting those in there just to prevent the piece that I'm going to be inserting in there from leaning so far back. It's still going to lean a little, but it, this putting those blocks in there helped. So you can see it's not, it's not so much of a lean. Okay, and so that is the piece I'm going to be using. I, going through all of this stuff, I found this cherub, and that is my something that flies or represents flight because 
cherubs fly and this has wings i was thinking of it more of like an angel but i guess a cherub is a type of angel but it has wings and the wings themselves are real feathery i don't know if you can see them at the base but in the detail shots you should be able to see the like feathery wings so i started with this cherub by putting some white gesso on on it later on i'll add some white chalk paint which worked a bit better than my because my gesso this liquitex basics gesso is a fairly thin gesso it's not super thick and yeah so and i put several coats of that everything gets several coats of gesso so for the backer in that arched portion i decided what i wanted to use because i wanted something fairly sturdy to back that angel because it is ceramic and heavy and I felt like if I just used some kind of paper it could easily rip off of it so I wanted something very sturdy so I decided I'd get some tin. I make jewelry out of tin containers these are like cookie containers and I have found over the course of time that these gold ones do this beautiful thing when you distress them and add a patina to them so I decided to grab one of these gold ones this is just the base from one of those and I'm using it some tin snips I'll put a link in the upper right to how I break down tins so that you can see, kind of see how I get the base of them but I, I keep the bases for projects like this where I don't especially need the design from the tin so I'm using my favorite tin snips being super careful y'all they're very quite a few periods in here where I probably should have worn gloves and um so do as I say not as I do all right so what am I doing here so I've got my tin container cut out I decided to go ahead and fortify the front of my of my clock too with that metal piece that came out of it I could use that for something else but I decided since it fit in there perfectly I've turned it upside down from how it was and I tried the E6000 in there but there wasn't a whole lot of surface area to glue it so I've got some like floral wire y'all that I'm going to use to help hold that in place Now I start by inserting it from the front and wrapping it around but I realized I really didn't want my twists on that front side or that round side this is because this is two-sided you can decide which side is which I'm gonna end up going through the back and then bringing it yeah back around to the arch side because that's gonna have the metal on top and less of a chance for I don't know for there to be any kind of ripples in anything and you can see I've got, you know, y'all, this is a very long video because this was such a multi-step process. So many little tiny details I wanted y'all to see. So I hope you enjoy them. But if there's something you have questions about that I didn't cover because I did skip around a little bit in here, just let me know. Okay, y'all, this is my favorite part of the whole thing. I have these puffy stickers from the Dollar Tree and decided I would use them to accent my timer. And when I was looking at it, I realized that they had these photo corner type pieces in there, which are triangles. So this is my triangle contribution. So I took it straight off the way it was and tried to put it down, but I realized it was a little bit bigger than I really wanted there. So I'm going to just take some scissors and trim it down and it gives it even more of a triangular shape than it actually had to begin with. So, and I'll put it more towards the, yeah, I start by putting it towards the, the circle side, front side, the original front side, and decide that it works better more toward the back. And I'm not going to show you every single step I do in this because I'm going to tell you I put another one of those triangles, the photo corner things, on the other side. I might include some of these things, but not, not all of it. I did add some of the E6000 to these stickers simply to make sure that they stick really well because they are just, again, dollar store stickers and not, you know intended really for this purpose but they make great texture I, it makes me want to go out and buy more of these dollar tree <laughs> stickers so i'm going to use several different ones on here in addition to those little triangles i'm using this i don't even know what you call it what that shape is but those are going to go just above the actual texture that's already on there and i'm going to use some 
because that is curved that sticker does not want to stay down so I'll use some what do you call them clothes pins to to hold it down as a bit of a clamp you see me trying to hold it and it got a little gunky there but all of that is fine it really all helps with the texture when I do some of the the dry brushing and whatnot that's to come because these are all mismatched and all of that you, you see me trying to figure out how to get that on there but that's just gonna help hold that sticker down to the curve and um, I do again I do this over all the sides I even add one to the top and you'll see that later so I'm going back to my 10 piece and I'm using a little bit of alcohol to take off the because I'd use a fine tip sharpie to make my you know to make my trace of it I'm getting that off and now I'm using a sanding block to uh, soften the edges just so that as I'm working with it it's not so pointy or anything like that it's not going to matter once I insert it into the timer but I wanted to start with that and now I am distressing the front of this so it's going to go matte first but what I really want to do because it's that gold color behind that gold is the like aluminum silvery color and I want to expose all of that but just patches of it so that's what I'm doing is trying to get some distressing and exposing some of the patches of the silver. I don't know if you can see that in the video here. And again, I'm checking the edges to make sure it's fairly smooth as I work with it. All right, so then I will bring in, to distress it, I'm using Novakin Black Patina for Solder. Um, my label with my my bottle so old the labels not even there and again I should be using gloves but I have a cheap paintbrush there and I'm dipping it into that patina and rubbing it over the surface of that arch tin just like that and can you see how it darkens that where it is turned black is where that silvery metal had been exposed and I love that technique y'all so I'm getting that patina off and y'all I'm again not touching that solution at all with my hands. It's very important that you don't touch that raw solution. It, it can be very toxic. But once I get that cleaned up I'm going to come in with some Johnson's Paste Wax. You can get this at the hardware store but I'll put a link to it below if I can find it online. And I'm just rubbing that over that patina and the edges. This helps seal in that altering because if because of the exposure and the chemical you put on there it can possibly rust and you don't want it to rust so I'm trying to seal that darkened patina there once I get the the wax on then I kind of buff it in and that yeah and it's sealed just like that so that I've put aside and I'm going to come back in with a thicker piece of cardboard basically. This is like one of those really sturdy, this, it's like a chipboard. It's a really sturdy back from a, a watercolor pad or some other kind of notepad. I just wanted something really sturdy for that round portion in the front. And so the cardstock that I started with was just because it was easier to cut to make sure I got my shape right. And now I'm using this is going to be my actual base for that other side, not the arch side, the circle side. <laughs> so many shapes and I don't... I just couldn't make decisions on this shop. It's like, well, it's got two openings. I can make it two-sided. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm making sure that, because of where the blue is showing, that's the same fine tip Sharpie I used for the tin. I just kind of want to cut that off because I know that that's what the problem is, is if that blue is showing, it's, it's not going to fit in there. So I get it where it fits. And I think that's when I go ahead and I'll use my black gesso again and coat my circle here. And it's, you can see how sturdy it is as I'm painting it. And I make sure I get my edges as well so that none of that shows through. And y'all, this is, we're still not even getting to the focals right now. This is all still just prep. And you can see the top of my timer there. I haven't added anything to the top, but there's a floral element that was in that sticker pack that I'm going to add to it in a minute. But for my circle here, I have a second sticker pack that has like these 
flourishy word things. And I'm going to grab this one right here. And y'all, I was super excited. I thought that love portion was actually going to come with it. And I didn't want it. I was going to try to alter it or cut it out somehow. But nope, it was its own sticker. So I'm. this is, y'all... Dollar Tree stickers. I'm super excited about the texture I'm, I'm getting from them. So I decided to go ahead and trace that inner portion real quick because I knew I wanted to know how big it was. So anything I added to the center, I had that size. So I traced that real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick that sticker into my circle. I think I am. But I'm going to use some tacky glue to make sure it sticks. I don't need anything as strong as E6000 because this is just a lightweight sticker going on to some cardboard. So I will stick that down as center as I can. I don't often measure, so it's just going where it's going. I'm eyeballing everything. And I will clip it as well just to make sure it doesn't bend. Now here I'm showing you the app. That, that's the chalk paint. I had put, I think, at least two layers of the white gesso on my chair up there and it hit me at some point that the chalk paint would be better because it's thicker and it would also give like a plastery look to the angel to the cherub and then I'll put some of the black gesso there on that label sticker that we just put down once it was good and dry and again it's going to get I think I put like three layers of black gesso on there just to make sure all of that sticker was covered so that none of the the shininess of it poked through and then I'll do the same thing over the stickers on the timer so this is again it's all just prep we're we're going to get to some of the focal here all right, so that is my cherub all prepped and good base layer of everything. And I'm bringing in, this is an antiquing wax, which I've only recently realized I don't have to just use it on wood, that it works great on other things. <laughs> so uh, it hit me. I could put it on top of that chalk paint and then wipe away the excess here. And it gives this great vintage antique feel to to my angel so I'm going to do the whole angel but I, I'm not going to make y'all watch because it's the same process I'm putting it on in sections and then wiping it away when it's dry it looked like that how cool is that all right now that everything is good and dry I'm using this is a Finnebear metallic wax and I think aged brass is the color because I wanted a metallic feel to this it hit me later that I could have used like a gold foil would have been super neat on here and so that may be something I try another time but this this antiquing wax or whatever what not antiquing wax it's a metallic wax is so easy to apply that it's it's a bit easier actually than a gold foil would have been but I'm putting it as you see on the angel just to give it some of the metal accents and then I'm also going to do my label here and I think my finger hit the uh, cardboard there so I've decided to go ahead and put some on the cardboard around the edges now I'm going to go ahead and say that this finished product the only part that really bothers me is the edges of this and I futz with it and futz with it and try to do all different kinds of things to make me feel better about it and none of it really ever worked well for me uh, you'll see in the end but it's still super neat if you're not looking at it a certain way anyway once I have down there I decided it would be cool to have it look like it was patinaed so I've got some uh, Americana acrylic paint just some craft paint and I think the color is sea breeze I'll have it below it's one of my favorites but it looks like a patina you would find on something old and medley so I'm just kind of dry brushing it in different places not being really precise about it because when stuff starts getting a patina like that it's not precise at all it's really random so I do that on my like I said my angel and my little label thing over there those are my two focals for this for the two sides and it was I kind of wanted to go with I mean, now that it is kind of the Christmas season I kind of wanted to have like a Christmassy feel to it so I'm going to pick out wor a word to go inside that label that to me can be Christmas or whatever. 
So this is some acrylic paint in a gold color that I decide to dry brush over my timer and I'm going to do the whole thing. I don't know if I show you the whole thing and I'm using really too small of a brush for this. I was really just wanting to get the, I don't know, to get those stickers I added. You can see how cool they work out, but it didn't seem quite right to not do the whole timer itself and think it's right in here somewhere you can see where some of the brush strokes even from putting the gesso down get picked up it's kind of cool I and I, I love picking up the texture with this method and I end up doing the whole clock I mean timer doing the whole timer so I've got that aged brass wax again and I'm going back over my stickers specifically and not the whole timer so that it has just a little bit of a different tone and shine to it. I could have done this also with my foundry wax from Tim Holtz but I decided I didn't really want to heat the stickers because that might cause them to melt or try to peel up or anything so and then I'm adding more of that patina color to different areas again super random I'm mostly hitting the where the stickers are um, only, well, I guess maybe I did do some of the, the timer too, but mostly where the stickers are to make them feel like they're a different metal somehow, but I don't know. I was playing y'all. I had a really good time with these, uh, you know, said she was going to try for December to make it a little bit easier, but this even felt easier because it really was just like alter something, add wings, add, or flying something and add triangles so everything else was kind of a play and that's yeah that's what I did <laughs> I played very much with this so once I got that patina down I felt like it was almost too bright so I grabbed that gold acrylic paint again and a larger brush and I'm going back over it it's a dry brush, so I'm not like smearing the paint everywhere. I'm just pushing back some of the patina and getting a little more of the gold on the timer. And I don't know what to call it now that it's not a timer anymore because I have altered it. It is no longer a timer. It is, it is something else entirely. It's a frame. I've made it an art decor frame of sorts. So there it is. I'm getting that gold. And I'm sorry that I'm off frame in some of this. I had zoomed in so you could see better and I forgot how far I had zoomed in so but you can you can tell kind of what I'm doing oh and please note that I did on the arch side I did go inside the little bit of the front of that so that it also was altered and yeah here I'm going around my label some just to bring that gold onto it as well because it only had the aged brass from the wax and now I'm bringing in what I'm going to put inside that label and I decided to keep it small and simple and I wanted to emboss the word joy. So I've got some letter stamps and some embossing ink that I'm using to to stamp it out and that Y was far too far from the O and even though it fit, there's my little template I had. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it again because I just felt like I it felt a little wonky. And I still, the second time, the Y ends up farther away than I really want it to be. But it is it is a handmade art. It is art. It's not going to be perfect. It's not machine done. So with embossing, you add a, once you get your embossing ink down, you add your embossing powder to it. Shake off the excess. And I always put away my my powder before I get anything else out so that we don't have that going everywhere and then you use a heat gun and this makes it the embossing you can see here I think as it gets super shiny I love that and so there I've got my little embossed joy word and I'm going to cut it down with my scissors and decide that I don't really like the big letter I mean the bulkiness of it so I'll fussy cut a little bit around the word so it fits in better oh and I did that stamping on some vellum because I wanted it to be um I didn't want it to be anything that felt uh, heavy or had to be part of it I kind of wanted it to disappear a little so I, I did it on vellum which is like a transparent ish paper 
but it does get real tricky to glue vellum down. It doesn't want to, it likes to curl and not stick to things and all of that. So I'm going to use that tacky glue again to glue it down. And I had to hold it for a while. I'm spreading out with a toothpick, making sure I get all of that back of piece of that paper. Because if it doesn't, it won't stick and it will curl and it will do all the craziness. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in the middle of my little frame there and hold it down for a while. Now here's one of the things I decide to do to try to adjust that outer edge of this. I've got embossing ink in this bottle that I'm spreading with a paintbrush around the outside edge of my circle and I'm going to emboss it also with that gold embossing powder. It was just something I thought would work. I kept trying different things. I pulled out like some tiny beads and, and put them up against it to see if that would work, but it, it made it, it, the beads didn't seem to quite go with the, the way the frame was. It was like cl too clashing too much with how the frame is. It didn't seem to have the same style. So I was trying to keep it simple with this embossing and it's, it's what it is. Um, if you have any ideas of, of what could have gone there instead, I'd love to hear them. So as you saw, I just painted that on, put the embossing powder, shook off the excess, and now I am doing my best to heat it. Again, I'm trying not to get onto that sticker because I don't want the sticker to melt or to pull up. So I tried not to overheat that. And now I'm down to assembling everything, y'all. I've got my E6000 and I'm just putting it on that inner rim or that outer rim where that joy is actually going to touch. And I leave that to dry on that side. Once it's dry, I will flip it over. Oh wait, while it's drying, I'm also putting down E6000 on my cherub that I am going to stick onto my metal plate there and let gravity kind of hold everything until it is dry. And once it is dry here, I will glue my metal plate into there. So I'm putting the glue again onto the areas that will be touching the metal. And that's easier than putting out, just putting a bunch on the metal and not knowing where it's going to touch. And so I'm fitting it in there just like so. And again, letting gravity do it. And now I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this. This is some kind of candle holder I picked up at an estate sale knowing it would make a great base for something like this. So I put E6000 on that and I'm putting that on there. And I'm going to come back once this is dry and kind of alter this front a little. I found that too shiny so I'm going to push it back just a little with some dry brushing of the black gesso. And then I'm going to add diamond glaze inside the where the joy is to give it more of like a label appearance like the original sticker had and that's it y'all that is my contribution for november's four core from ina salisbury i encourage you to go check out ina and what she makes beginning of december she should have hers up along with announcing what the four core ingredients will be for december beginning of december she'll have it i don't know what i said and I hope I'll be able to participate. I do have jury duty coming up in December, so I'm not real sure what my schedule is going to look like. I'm a little nervous about getting everything done and doing jury duty with Christmas and all of that. So I'm hoping I can balance it. All right. So from that to that, I think I did a great job uh, making it into something different. I hope y'all think so too. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and I will see y'all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.